10 things I wish I knew before buying a G-Shock. Let's get into it. Yes, and welcome to the Mad Watch Collector Show. Everybody needs a G-Shock. We could all do with one watch that is practically indestructible, where you can strap it on your wrist and get down and dirty with the meanest, baddest, roughest jobs or chores you do in your life, safe in the knowledge that that G-Shock will not let you down. Ever. Ever. Now, I'm sure that many of you, like myself, when starting to get sort of interested in G-Shocks, are overwhelmed with the amount of styles, shapes and references G-Shock offer. Quite a few of them are pig ugly. <laughs> Well, hopefully today's show, 10 Things I Wish I Knew Before I Bought a G-Shock, will help you moving forward on your G-Shock journey. So first of all, number one, be prepared. Because after you've seen this show, you will buy loads of them. And you'll be buying watches that even you think are too big for you. And are a little bit ugly. Number two, G-Shocks are meant to be big. You have to understand that before moving forward. It's good to know a little bit of the history or the inception of the G-Shock so that you buy into the brand. Kiko Aibe, head creator of the tough team at Casio, was given a lovely, delicate pocket watch as a gift from his dad. But the worst happened, he dropped it and it shattered into a million pieces. From that moment back in 1981, the main aim of Kiko Aibe's team was to come up with a practically indestructible watch that would be based on the triple 10 philosophy. It would be water resistant to 100 meters, it would have a 10 year battery life and you could drop it from 100 meters and it would survive. Two years and 200 prototypes later, Casio released the DW5000C, inspired by a bouncy ball. See, the bouncy ball would take a lot of pounding on the surface, but if something was to go inside it in the middle, it would be snug as a bug. So the design of the initial G-Shock was a big rubber shroud that protected the whole movement and the design of this original square was to give the best distribution if it was to impact on the floor. Now it wasn't until 1986 when the Western market got hold of G-Shock did the brand absolutely explode. And from that original square design, it has inspired many, many other designs still using that anti-shock ethos. And that brings me nicely to number three. <laughs> Nostalgia. Casio are very aware that people of a certain age that got into G-Shocks in the 80s and the 90s love to reminisce about the good old days. G-Shocks still make a watch very similar to that DW5000C in the DW5600. C. Now I love brand history and so that watch to me well, I've got to have it. If that's what started this G-Shock revolution, I want to feel part of it and own one on my wrist. Also, if you're someone that thinks G-Shocks are a little bit complicated looking, the first ones that came out and have been reissued, like the 6900, the 5900, they're simple looking designs, but very iconic looking, and they're basically a like-for-like -like copy of the ones first made in the 80s and 90s. And for someone like me that loves a little reminisce, it's great. Um, could you just click that? like button please it really helps the channel thank you buttons part of the design of the g-shock means that the buttons are slightly recessed into the case if the watch falls on the floor the buttons won't be accidentally hit god forbid i changed the mode or i've accidentally turned the backlight on but because of the design the buttons are quite hard to press in unlike a budget casio Easy peasy. So don't moan about it. It's part of what makes a G-Shock and it's something you've got to come to terms with. Now I said it at the start of the show, but G-Shocks are meant to be big. I've only got a six and a half inch wrist. I have now accepted that G-Shocks are meant to be big. So if it looks big on my wrist, that's the way it is. However, if you are looking to get into G-Shocks and want the smallest G-Shock G-Shock makes, that's not a baby G. If G-Shock made more of these without the baby on the top, I think they'd sell a lot more. But the smallest one to get is ironically the original one, the 5600. It wears almost like a 40 
20mm diameter watch. The finished G-Shocks at the moment are the 2100 range. Yes, the Cassie Oaks. A new watch that was released in 2019. It's an Annie Digi Beauty that sort of resembles a Royal Oak because of the octagonal sides. But those are the smallest and the thinnest ones for you. Super. Next up, sensors. Yeah, all over the place. As the years have gone on, Casio have been offering more and more features to their G-Shocks. Different sensors that go around the watch to make them even more useful. Unfortunately though, the more sensors you have on a G-Shock, the more it looks like an extra from batteries not included. Welcome to America. But some G-Shocks offer an altimeter, which measures your height above sea level, a barometer, which measures the pressure in the air and can predict the incoming weather. They have digital compasses, thermometers, the frogmen have depth sensors, basically anything that Batman has on his utility belt. <laughs> The more sensors you have on a watch, the more pricey it is. And also, the more sensors you have on a watch, the uglier it is. <laughs> when you get to a triple sensor Mudmaster, the watch is absolutely huge and looks like something that Ironhide dug up at Cybertron. Those watches are cool, but they take a little bit more getting used to. <laughs> Next up, we have to talk about the Paradox G-Shock. Now, in terms of G-Shock sold through the decades, I will show you with this pen. This is the arrow of our watches sold. 80s, oh, it's coming up, look. Up, 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 90s, whoa! Up, 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 really popular in the 90s. 2000s, sort of, sort of peaks, okay? And we get to 2008, 2009, 2010, oh! Plummet. That's right, the popularity of G-Shocks from about 2009 and 10 absolutely hit the floor. And you know what saved it? Luxury G-Shocks, namely the MRGs and the MTGs. These acquired pieces of art, which are worth ridiculous money, use precious metals like your titaniums, and those watches go for three, four, five thousand pounds. In 2014, Casio, to show off, made a G-Shock entirely of gold. It was a one-off piece not to be sold, but they did it because because, I don't know, they could. But that was so popular that Casio decided to celebrate their 35th anniversary using the mold of that gold G-Shock to make fully stainless steel squares. Beautiful, shiny G-Shocks, a beautiful silver and a gaudy gold one. And I have both of them. And to tell you the truth, I'm not sure why. See, G-Shocks were created in 1983 to be indestructible, to take a beating and keep on digitizing. We all know that stainless steel is pretty tough, but isn't superfluous to a scratch, particularly if the stainless steel is polished. Now for me, I call these G-Shocks Paradox G-Shocks. They are watches that can, in theory, take a beating, but we'll never know if they actually can. Because I will never take these G-Shocks out into the wild where I could potentially scraze it or bash them about. They're too pretty. Now these two cost around 500 pounds, which is a lot of money for a G. Can you imagine seeing and someone doing the gardening wearing this thing. Paradox G-Shock. Get your watch out. Next up, don't be scared of a MIP G-Shock. Yes, over the last two years, Casio have been rolling out G-Shocks with a memory in pixel display. Now, this is not new. Nokia were doing it in their phones, what, 20 years ago? But just look how clear one of these MIP displays are to an original LCD screen. And for anyone with aging eyeballs, it's a game changer. But unfortunately, at the minute, Casio are only doing MIP displays displays in their smart watches of the G-Shock line. And a lot of you are a little bit scared of dipping your feet into the smart watch world. And I can totally agree with that. These watches can be connected via Bluetooth to your phone. However, you can disable the Bluetooth and just use one of these watches like your regular G-Shocks. And even without your phone, can still offer some good added features like a step counter. And let me tell you, once you go MIP, you won't go back. Hopefully in the years to come, we'll get a regular normal G-Shock 5600 with a MIP display and Casio will sell thousands. Unfortunately at the minute, we're resorted to buying a smartwatch that gives you a Yogi Bear paw print at the end of the day in order to give you your heart rate. And for me, as long as I'm breathing, my heart's fine and shouldn't be measured. That sort of thing can get you quite anxious. Now the last thing I have to say is there is no other brand in the world that not only can take a beating, but 
is also protected by snobbery. This is definitely an anti-snob brand. The only diss you can give to a G-Shock is maybe the looks, but anyone with a mechanical watch, say a Rolex or an Omega, that turns their nose up at a G-Shock are fully aware that they are a hundred times more tougher and most definitely more accurate. Plus, they've definitely costed at least 10 times less. They have the history from 1983, the 70s if you count Casio, but G-Shocks are one of the most recognized brands in the world and for good reason. But if they do try to keep the snobbery up on your G-Shock, you have my permission to take it off your wrist and thrust it in their faces. Take two. Let's see a little more originality, shall we? <laughs> so there we go, what a great list. There is a reason why militaries all around the world recommend to all their new recruits they get themselves a G-Shock. Reliability, toughness, accurate, they've got a sensor or two if you want them. My recommendation to you is the GMW 5610. You. This watch costs around £100. It's 200 meters of water resistance. It's tough. It's got solar powered, which means you don't need to change the battery. It's got multi band six, which means it picks up a signal every early morning time to give the accurate time. That watch is the one I would recommend to you, even if you're not in the army or police force. If you are thinking of buying a G Shock or have recently bought one, or if you have any advice on top of this stuff that I've just given you today, please whack it down in the comments below. And also, if I've got you for a few more minutes, check this one out. <laughs> this is sensational. And one of my best works, to be fair. One of my best works in that week. Um, I've probably done two shows in that week, but go on, click it. It's great. Click, click it. Click it!